the bucktail hair jig has to be one of the oldest and most versatile fishing lures ever invented. And when it comes to fishing at old school, it doesn't get much more old school than the iconic bucktail. Stick around as we talk a little bit of jig history, as well as look at some custom jigs that I just received from fellow YouTuber and expert jig tire, Jay Worth. Retro bassin', kicking some assin', wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. Though the history of the bucktail jig definitely began much earlier than this, for our purposes, we'll start the discussion in Atlantic City, New Jersey in the 1940s. There, brothers William and Maury Upperman designed the first ever mass-produced bucktail jig known simply as the Upperman Jig. On March 30th of 1943, William K. Upperman was awarded a U.S. patent for his fish lure and if you look at the patent application itself, it is almost a, an exact how-to guide on how to build this iconic jig. Now the Upperman jig boasted a vertically flattened head design. This did a couple of different things. Uh, for one, it increased the side profile of the jig while keeping weight down. In addition to that, it also reduced disturbances and turbulence in the water especially that bubble that tended to form on other jigs right around the islet. And I think one of the concerns that they had back in the day with air bubbles on jigs is that fish would often hit the air bubble and totally miss the jig itself. Upperman's jigs were so effective that they were included in the Naval Pilot Survival Kits in World War II. I found a great article on the contents of such a survival kit over at Lure Love Podcast. And suffice to say, if they entrusted a single lure to help down pilots and sailors survive in the hostile sea conditions, it must have been a very productive lure. The Upperman jig resembles a lima bean style jig that you would still use for stripers today. And though I've only seen the line drawings of this jig, I imagine it to be all white, very similar to some of these jigs from my personal collection. What's crazy about these jigs is they had so many different head designs. Each head design had a different action. Some of these are better for trolling. Some of these much better for bottom bouncing. But a saltwater jig is not a freshwater jig. And even more modifications to this lure would have to be made if it was going to catch a black bass. Championship fishing TV show host and Bass Buster Lure Company founder Virgil Ward patented the Fiber Weed Guard sometime around 1955. Here's an early pack of Bass Buster jigs featuring Virgil's patented Weed Guard. And if you get a close look at it, you can see this is pretty similar to the Fiber Weed Guard that we still use today. There were also a few innovations to head shape and hook style. And here are a few pieces of old school gold that I received courtesy of Terry over at Bass Fishing Archives. He sent these a while back and at the time I didn't realize how unique both of these pieces are. The first one is an original football style jig head designed by Larry McLean in 1965. And check out that wire weed guard. That thing is wild. The second is the Gary Klein weapon jig designed in 1983 and this head, but specifically this hook, revolutionized pitching and flipping forever. While both of these jigs likely were equipped with an artificial silicone skirt, I read a great article about a uh, late pro Guido Hibden talking about his affection for hair jigs. Guido was an avid jig tire and experimented with a bunch of different materials, including deer flank hair, squirrel, badger, and even Silver Fox. According to Guido, natural hair would outproduce any synthetic jig skirt material that you could think of. Fast forward to today, 
let us talk about how I received this box of custom-made bucktail hair jigs. It was about a year ago, we were out in Mountain Home, Arkansas, and we stumbled upon a really neat little tackle shop. In that store, we found an entire section filled with handmade bucktail jigs. Well, YouTuber and jig tire Jay Worth saw the episode, reached out to me on Facebook, and he and I got in an interesting little conversation about bucktail jigs. Jay ties some really wild stuff on his channel, and though he is a northern angler, tends to specialize in the pike, pickerel, walleye contingent, I challenged him with tying some hair jigs for bass to mimic the ones that I picked up at Jerry's. So this is the box that Jay sent me, and we're gonna crack it open now for the cameras and see <laughs> what kind of old school bucktail gold he sent me. And I'll probably clean up some of this stuff while we're doing it. Okay, so I do have the box from Jay here, as well as two of the different prototypes that I sent him pictures of. This is a Arky style a bucktail jig. It's brown on the top and has a little bit of chartreuse hair on the belly. And then this was another Arky style head, all black. I am pretty pumped to see what we have inside. <laughs> and to be honest, I've actually seen them already because he posted a full video of him tying those jigs on his YouTube channel. All right, we got a little note here from Mr. Worth. Chris, it was good hearing from you, and I thought it was a great idea to tie up some bucktail bass jigs, like many of those you showed in your video. I miss many of the old-timey bait shops that we used to visit as kids. You and me both. <laughs> those old shops like traditional jig tires are hard to find, but they're still around. In my collection of jig molds, I did have a couple that I think worked to recreate some of the old school bass jigs. Oh. I tried a few different styles and weights, and a few of these would go well with some retro rubber trailers. And I've got a plan for that as well. I think we're going to do a little bit of old jig and worm action. Along with the old style bucktail bass jigs, I included a few cards of jigs I tie for shops here in central New York. I hope they are something you can use and enjoy. One old card, uh, one quarter flat, was tied by my father, John T. Worth, who passed in 2003. It is new old stock from around 2000, 21 years old. That's crazy, by the way, that 2000 is 21 years old. <laughs> I posted a video of tying a few of these bucktail jigs which can be found at this link, and Bass and Buds, you better believe, will drop the link to that video down below. I added a few patches that are 25 plus years old that I found while looking for the older molds. I'm sure you will get a kick out of them, and I'm sure I'll get a wear out of them as well. <laughs> uh, thank you for Retro Bassin, and the work you do reminding viewers of the old school memories of a simpler time. Enjoy the jigs and tight lines. Jay Worth from Vestal, New York. <sighs> All right, let's get it done, son. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. <sighs> what do we start with? Uh, let's start with the patches, huh? So these are some old school patches that Jay sent along. The first one, <laughs> Mustad fish hooks. That is awesome. And I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but that's got a very metallic uh, looking sheen to it. Nice. Ooh, classic Mr. Twister. I'll have to put that on a hat and wear that when I'm fishing an old Phenom orb or something. Very nice. And what is the next one? Um, I don't know what that patch is. Sort of like an F and an I and a T maybe. I don't know. Bass and Buds, let me know if you recognize this uh, logo. All right. 
So let us start with these guys, the carded packs. Woo! So he sent me four carded packs. Wow, okay. If I was back in Maryland fishing for some chain pickerel, holy cow. These would be amazing for a little shad dart and minnow action. Look at the craft of these. Oh. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 carded jigs. Does it say anything about these guys? Um, no, but that looks like a little ball head style jig there. Beautiful multicolored striped skirt. Whew, and that nice little golden light wire live bait hook. Oh wow, that is beautiful. And now, what is this? So this says, uh, J. Worth Barumba. Ooh, look at that jig. So we'll try to get a profile of this thing. That is actually a very flat looking jig. Maybe a little Upperman style, huh? Look at that. That is beautiful. So that is a uh, sort of a two color jig there. It looks like an olive hair on top and white on the bottom. And I think that thing is probably a half an ounce. Those are some gorgeous heavy jigs. Totally a walleye and minnow jig, huh? Oof, beautiful. The Barumba. And another nice pack of Barumbas in a olive and blue color. Oof. Oh, look at those. Another 12 of those. You know, I want to fish these, but I kind of hate to break up the cards. I'll have to do some soul searching on that one. And this is pretty special. So I think this is the carded jigs. Look, Barumba style that Jay said his father tied 21 years ago. And those look like a quarter flat. So yeah, that is totally a profile similar to that Upperman jig, isn't it? Obviously much smaller design, but very unique. And that's a gorgeous color, a nice red and white, old school saltwater color. Wow. Okay, and now this, <laughs> this is the juice, or maybe the hair. So I watched a video of Jay tying these jigs on his YouTube channel. I'll post a link to that down below. It is a great video and he goes step by step in how he ties his jigs. First off, it gave me a huge appreciation for just how difficult it is to tie a jig. I had no idea how much thought goes into what kind of hair you use, how you position that hair, how you wrap. I mean, he is so dialed in. Uh, he talks about how many wraps he puts at each stage where the wrap seat. Each one of these is gonna be like a work of art and it's gonna be a real challenge to throw these. And if I do, I better take my lure retriever. Oof. So let's see what we've got here. Wow, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hair jigs courtesy of, of Mr. Worth. And where are we gonna start? Well, let's start with the one that I just picked up here. Oh, a black Arky style hair jig. And look at this Bass and Buds. Compare that to what I sent him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is spot on. There is a nice high quality hook here. Beautiful Arky style head. Great for flipping and pitching. But check out the flare of that hair. One of the things I didn't know about jig tying is that too much hair is actually a bad thing. And you'll notice that this bait has enough hair, but it's not super thick. It's not like a big wad of hair. This bait will have a really nice fall with this hair flared out like this. Oof, that's a beautiful, beautiful jig. Okay, so here's another one and yeah, this definitely resembles the other jig that I sent him from Jerry's. Woo! 
Look at that beauty. Nice Arky style head. Oh, nice little weed guard there, sort of trimmed pro style there with the flat on the top. And look at that brown and yellow. And again, we'll compare that to the uh, Jerry's Jigs. Oh, that is spot on. <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, that's a beaut. That's a beaut. So it looks like that is in a... What size is that? So this looks like a 5 8 ounce jig. And I see one in the same color that might be maybe a quarter ounce. We'll see. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Oh, a beautiful quarter ounce jig. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Just the precision of this thing. This is unbelievable. So what else did he send us? Ooh, there's a nice one. Looks like a quarter ounce in a black head with a brown skirt. Oh. Wow. Here's one, looks like it's the same color combination, but in, I'm assuming, a 5 8 ounce. <laughs> this thing is going to be hard to fish, but boy, I'm going to have to, but oof, I am not going to want to lose one of these. That's a great looking bait, isn't it? Ooh, nice little quarter ounce Arky style head. And that one is more of a bait fish pattern. Woof, a little brown on the top, white on the bottom with some stripes. Nice. Here's another all black in, I'm assuming a quarter ounce. Little thinner wire hook there. And speaking of football style heads, there's two football jigs here. Oh, I didn't expect these. Ooh, look at that quarter ounce football style head jig. A black with a little, uh, little purple and gray belly. Look at that. Piece of artwork. And last but not least, I think this is another 5 8 ounce jig head. Could be a half, but I think it's a 5 8 And that is a brown and purple. Woo -hoo -hoo. <sighs> wow, this is quite a, uh, a collection of old school gold made by a, a new school artiste. That is extremely cool. Look at those. Oh, man. So as Jay and I talked more and more, I was really curious to learn more about his experience tying these jigs, just how he got into it, and also that connection to his father, whom he said taught him how to tie these jigs. I think that is what is so cool about this channel, is that it's that link to the past. I think whether it is through something that you saw as a kid or some memory you have with you know your father, your mother, going out and teaching you the sport of fishing. So I went ahead and I asked Jay a couple of questions which he was gracious enough to give me the answers to. I'm gonna go ahead and read some of this Q&A with Jay. In the meantime, I'm gonna throw up a little video of Jay tying these jigs so you can enjoy that as we go through this. First question from Retro is, how long have you been tying jigs? Jay says, I learned to tie jigs at a young age, 10 years or so. That is young. I would help my father tie those jigs to fill orders during the busy times. And at age 12, <laughs> easy, the colors were all white or all black. <laughs> I'm now in my mid-50s, so kind of a long time, no doubt. Next question is, you've mentioned your dad's jig tying equipment. Tell me more about your dad and the connection to jig tying. This one I'm anxious to hear about. 
Jay says, my father was always an avid fisherman, beginning as a boy in fishing from the banks of the Susquehanna River here uh, in Binghamton, New York. Living in central New York State, as a young adult, my father would fish the lakes and streams from the Finger Lakes to the Catskill Mountains. As a trout fisherman, he began tying flies and bucktail streamers. His day job was a salesman, and he traveled across New York and Pennsylvania, getting to know every inch of water and bait shop. That sounds like somebody I know. <laughs> uh, sometime in the 1960s, he began casting and selling bucktail jigs and streamers. Around that time, he began also processing furs and feathers, dyeing them himself and selling them to other shops and tires. My first memories of working in the jig business before I uh, learned to tie, I was salting raw deer tails. <laughs> Stirring large pots as tails were dyed and turning thousands of them as they dried. Oh, that is awesome. Along with all that, he also repped companies like Universal Vice and Mustad. Dad was always thinking, if a shop doesn't need jigs, they might need hooks and materials. At one time, my father had a dozen or so tires working for him and sold all over New York, Pennsylvania, and into Canada. He eventually retired from his sales job and in the mid-1980s continued tying and selling to the early 2000s. <laughs> oh man, that makes this pack even cooler and yeah, this thing is probably going to go right on display behind me. All right, next question from Old Retro. I see you work mostly with bucktail. What do you like best about bucktail jigs versus rubber jigs? From the perspective of a traditionalist, I like using natural materials. I had the same feeling when tying trout flies and streamers. There was a time when fishermen had to make things themselves. And there's something appealing to me about the history and craftsmanship of creating a lure. And to be honest, there's also a big thrill when others know I'm catching a fish on something I made. I did see some of those Barumba jigs on Jay's YouTube channel. And I asked him specifically about this head design because it intrigued me so much. Here's what Jay has to say about the Barumbas. The Barumba jig is designed by my father sometime in the late 1960s. It's primarily a walleye jig. Uh, pike from Pickerel to Northern Pike also like them. It uses a fine wire hook which helps live bait, i.e. minnows, remain lively. I've had fishermen stop me at tackle shops and compliment the jig and rave about the balance of the Barumba. Uh, the molds I have for this head are all custom. Sometime in the early 1970s was a small change where the collar was removed. If you weigh the heads, they do fall under their name sizes, but my father kept them as fractions, but never stated them as ounces. And that's why this says just one quarter flat. I guess that means quarter ounce. Thinking about why the collar was removed from the molds, dad never gave a reason, just always said it was better. I suspect that the collar was removed to help speed up tying. This was done very early on, around the time the business was growing and dad was super busy, always tying. If you watch my other videos, tying a standard bucktail, you will see I place a dark color hair first and twist it into the underside of the jig and then add the lighter color. With a collar, this is just much more difficult to do and slows down production. I've never come across this technique in fly tying, researching bucktail jigs or streamers or other tires unless it was someone who was taught by my dad. It's a shame that my father never talked much about the details. Fishermen by nature are liars and keep secrets. And much of what I know is just from putting together the pieces of information with what I observed. One last thought, dad served uh, in Korea as a US Marine and after the war was stationed in Japan for a few years. He would talk about the Japanese craftsman slash businessman and would do things very structured and organized. I think his time overseas influenced his approach to business and manufacturing. Ah, uh, well Jay, thank you for sharing uh, the wonderful story of your own Thai experience and your father with the Bass and Buds out there. Bass and Buds, as you head on over to Jay's channel, prepare to have your mind blown with the way that he makes these jigs.
and prepare to feel very guilty if you ever lose one. By the way, if you do want to get a hold of any of these jigs, go ahead and reach out to Jay Worth. He doesn't have a website, but he did provide his email. I'll put it right here, and I'll also list it in the description of this video. It is jworth4702 at gmail.com. And there it is. I'll leave that up for a hot second for anybody who wants to take a little screenshot. <laughs> I cannot wait to get on the water with some of this old school gold. Thank you, Jay, for sharing your passion and your craft with Retro Bassin. Until next time, Bassin Buds, keep on jigging and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.